are as small as it is. Uh, but I shared this town, as I said, as a sports person when I was at Hilltown. My first visit was to Lovedale to come and play rugby. The two rival schools, Hilltown and Lovedale, missionary schools. Uh, so, Pastor, this area was uh, started by missionaries, really, and the schools around here were also established by missionaries. Uh, Love Day, I think in 1845, if I'm not mistaken, or thereabouts, 1841, and then Hilltown in 1855. So Hilltown is younger than Love Day. Fort as you know, it's in 1916. Um, but the idea about the University of Fort was uh, it originated around 1875 with the two schools here and of course with uh, St. Matthews around here in Fort Cox um, the man whose monument is there, Stuart around 1875 said that there is a need for a university for these students that's when the idea of the university was uh, but it took more than 40 years uh, for the university to come about. Uh, as you know, 1875, around the end of the 19th century, there was the Anglo War War. And the Union in 1910, lots of political struggles around that time. The World War, the first one in 1914. So all these partially delayed, uh, or partially played a role in delaying the, found, the founding of the university. But ultimately, in 1916, the university came about. So there, there are three pillars uh, in terms of education that you have around here. Love Day, Hilltown, and Forte. Those are the three pillars. And besides the educational aspect, Alice is a heritage town. So what we have been trying to fight for here is the declaration of some of these uh, areas that I've mentioned to be heritage sites so that tourists can come, so that we can link that history, um, including the fort that is there. And I showed them the fort where the, the English uh, army was kept fighting uh, our people in those wars of dispossession when land was being grabbed from us by the colonizers. So all of that history, and you can get most of it from the university itself, from the archives, you can get most of this history I'm relating to you. So this place is anchored around education, around the heritage, and around the missionary venture in terms of Christianity that was spreading around this place. Dio Soga was here, by the way. Uh, not at Forte, but at Love Day. Uh, so some of his songs were developed whilst he was here, or composed whilst he was here. And he was Presbyterian. Love Day was Presbyterian. Hilltown Methodist. Forte, a mixture of uh, Anglican, Presbyterian, and uh, and uh, Methodist. If you recall the three hostels that were at Forte, Wesley, obviously, is Methodist. Iona was uh, Presbyterian. Then Bida was Anglican. Then I can mention three people who stayed in these residences. That will ring bell to you. And then you, you know when you walk there. I, mean, I still develop some goosebumps when I think of those people, when I enter those old residences. Of course, my Madiba's residence is no longer there, the old Wesley. Uh, Wesley is the residence where Madiba stayed. Iona is the residence where Chrisan stayed. He was Anglican. And, and he said when he was coming here that he, he wanted to be an Anglican minister of religion uh, because he was a server in the Anglican church where he came from in Sofiva. And then at Bida, Bida, no, 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 I'm, I'm 
twisting around. Iona is Presbyterian, and Bida is Anglican, and Oar Tambo was in Bida, and Oar Tambo, as you all know, was one of the most religious leaders of the, the ANC. Um, so you, you, you can see how oppression, an oppressive system of apartheid, led people who were in their own upbringing pacifists, but led them into an armed struggle. Chris Ani came from Tofimba, a Sabadele area, where the seven uh, people were buried yesterday after an unfortunate car accident. And he was a server in the Anglican church in his place before he came here. And his thinking was that ultimately he would be a minister of religion, having watched how the missionaries were doing their job around the Tofimba. So you, you have that type of history. I am not sure in which residence um, Robert Mugabe was, but uh, when I met him in Harare some two years, three years ago, uh, of course I was fetching money because they were not paying our fees. So I was, I was there. So he, he said he wanted to see me, and I went to see him. The first thing he asked, is is still there. <laughs> That's where I cut my teeth in politics, in Salamans. And he, of course, he also asked about Victoria Hospital. Is Vic still there? Are the nurses still there? Because they, they didn't have many women here at the, at the university. So they used to cross the river, the Kume River, and go to, to, to Vic and uh, interact with the nurses. So some of them got married to nurses, some of them got married. In fact, at some stage when the university was being founded, there was resistance to admission of women. Uh, just like it was happening in Britain, women were not considered to be material for education, higher education. Not because they didn't have brains, but men wanted to dominate them forever. <laughs> Guess who fought for women here? Do you know? I saw somebody wearing a, a t-shirt with that name. Jabav. Jabav fought for women. That was one of the things he fought for, uh, for admission of women. At, uh, he, his argument was similar to the, <laughs> the one about uh, marriage. He said, if you educate men only, where will they get their wives? Because they need to get educated wives as well. So we must teach them here at Forte. Yeah. So the university was open for, 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 for women. It took long before you could have the numbers that we have now. More than 50% of our students now are, men, are women. In fact, 54% to be exact. And men are 46%. In my year, when I was here 73, two thirds of students were men one third women so there was only one residence for women and three residences for men and that was the year when we reached the number 1000 and speaking of uh, women and, and political struggles you know i had a cultural shock uh, i don't know if i ever told you about this we are, in 1973 when we had that strike we went to in the women's residence. And here I find this lady, well, I would say a woman, sitting on the tree, addressing us about the strike, talking to us, mobilizing us to join the strike. I was a first year student, so I was not uh, experienced at that stage about student politics. And I said, woman? I know it, Hilltown, the strike was led by men and uh, boys. Uh, it was led by us when we had a strike. But here was a woman addressing us. And guess who that woman was? Just to show how we are walking in the footprints of uh, great leaders. That was Tejo M. Tinso. Tejo M. Tinso was addressing us from that tree in 1973. And she went on to be a leader in the ANC and in the South African Communist Party. And you know now she's an ambassador in Italy. And so many, many people came from around 
of space. I mentioned Tiosoka, I mentioned Jabab already. Um, you know, as he came by, and I'm sure Vianney addressed you about, about this giant of literary works. Uh, he came from here, Sheshev. From Sheshev. Uh, he didn't study at Forte. But uh, you know, Madiba uh, remembers him as this poet who came in traditional gear, carrying a stick and addressing them at Hilltown. And he said for the first time, he was exposed to an African who could speak on issues that he understood instead of being just around the missionaries at Hilltown. Here was an African leader of literary works addressing them at, at Hilltown. From then on, he developed the consciousness of Africanism and um, you know the rest. So this, this, this place, and I usually talk about the Kume River as the fountain of scholarship, as the fountain that fed intellectuals, developed intellectuals. And you, you know the, the people who came through here, not just in political struggles. Economic sense, you find some of the Forte and Love Day uh, products who are all over this country and all over the world. Uh, because at that time, Forte, Lovedale, and Hilltown were open to the African continent, especially the southern African part of the continent. Up to Ghana, people could come here and study. Uh, so this place is a place we should adore, a place that we should come to, um, not just to tour it, but to say we need the blessings of the spirits that have moved around this place. If we want to ensure that the history of black intellectualism, the history of education is kept and remembered, and the faith that I usually speak about, uh, of course not from my own, but quoting Alexander K the founding principle of uh, Forte, who observed this love, this faith, this passion that young Africans had for education. And he says, I observed this amongst these young Africans, the faith they had in education, the love they had for education, and the passion they had for education. And he says, Unlike us, unlike them, as people who came from Scotland and came to, to, to Forte, where the doors were open everywhere when you are educated, he says this, this attachment to education was almost pathological because these guys would leave Forte, would leave Love Day, and go out and be exposed to the racism that did not open all the doors of professions, work, and everything that they wanted to have. So he says, although they had this love, it was almost pathological because they knew that out there, not all the doors would be open for them. The doors would be open for the whites in the main. But they still had this love for education. They had this passion for education. And that's, that's, that's what Madiba, Tambo, Chris Ani, Tenju Mjinso, many others who came after them, the young ones. Uh, you know, the secretary of the province uh, is a product of this university. He was here in the early 90s. Uh, Oscar. Oscar was here. So you go to any political organization, Take Robert Mangaliso, so link him to education, link him to the struggle for African liberation, and you know the brains that were there, that were around the space. Of course, people argue that it was the only university at that time, so it was bound to have even the best of the brains. Universities now are open, and people go wherever they want to go. But still, the germ that was planted in this area
by educationists, by missionaries, by people like uh, the ones I've mentioned who went through these doors. Well, Dennis Brutus, of course, what he was non racial in a sense, uh, although it was meant to be mainly for Africans. Uh, you, you found Indians, you found colors, you found a sprinkle of whites in the early years. The missionaries had their own children studying here, and then they would go uh, to, to other places. So you had a non-racial university, um, which in 1959, uh, apartheid wanted to turn into a purely Corsa, not even African, purely Corsa university, to bandustanize it uh, when they formed the other universities like Zululand, Westville, uh, Teflop, and Western Cape. To say, colors, you no longer have to study at Fort Hill. Go to the Western Cape. Indians, you don't have to study here. Go to uh, Devon, Westville. Sutu speaking people, you go to Teflo. Zulus, you go to Moye. That was the plan. To say, you are not the same. To promote the divisions that would not unite us to fight against the oppression that was there. In fact, my first exposure, exposure to Forte was when I was a young kid in Queenstown. And it was through blues. They had gone to play rugby in Queenstown, my hometown. We were young kids who used to carry kit in the early 60s for uh, the, the, the men who were playing rugby for our clubs in Queenstown. And I saw this team, wonderful rugby, the blend of rugby that they were playing. It was just beautiful. And we asked around, who are these? And we were told, it's Forte University next door. Uh, next door being 156 kilometers. So from then onwards, you got this attachment to the town of Alice because it had this University of Forte. We had students from Queenstown who were studying at Love Day. My first exposure to him, Mboemi Nyan, that book by A.C. Jordan, who is also a product of the University of Forte. Did you know that? A.C. Jordan and his wife, um, who is uh, from the Ndandala family, they studied here. Mwam Ndandala is still alive. Mama wo, um, wo, Palo, Palo Jordan, Mama wo Palo, still alive and around. They studied here. Govan Beggy and Epinetum Beggy. Mama Luseko, she's now 97, 98, somewhere there. Studied here in the 1930s. So we, we had that link with Forte and Alice from students who were in Queenstown coming from Love Day. And we were reading this book. It was read to us first by this uh, student of Love Day in the, in the 60s. I was still at primary, uh, senior primary, of course, not, uh, not lower primary. Then he would read this book and it attracted us so much because it had Amal Kahlo in a rich language, yes, of course. So everything you would find, Blanchard, Amal Kahlo, Nezak, please, yes, of course, you would find quotations from Inumbo Eminyan. And therefore you said, where is this love? And it's in Alice. So many, many a rich story can be told about this vicinity, let alone the wars that were fought around here. Our people trying to liberate themselves and regain the land that they had, Omar, Omar, and all others were fighting around here. So you are in a blessed place. The footprints that are here are footprints of giants. Whether you go to the academia, whether you go to the academic, uh, I mean the economic uh, parts of uh, the sector, the political sector, or public sector, you will find a presence of Alice. You know, when I started as vice chancellor in 2008, and we had meetings of vice chancellors, I would count around that table. How many vice chancellors have studied at Fortune? More than half you find 
and comfort for today. And we don't want to lose that. We really would like to encourage you, even if you are not from Forte, but from here, sit around that table in 10 years' time and say, how many people have a link with Alice? And you will find that there are links with Alice. There are young men and young ladies who studied here at Zululuas who are prominent in the South African society in many areas, professional, political, economic, you find the links with Alice. I, I was in one meeting uh, in, in Cape Town uh, with the uh, universities and other research institutes. Then comes a young, a young man who just listened to my voice and said, your voice is like that of my principal at Zulu Lawrence. He said, who was your principal? Then he says, Mr. Zetdom. I said, oh, that's my elder brother. And indeed, he had studied here. He had been schooled at Zulu Lawrence. And he is prominent in agricultural research now. And is now CEO of the uh, Zoological Gardens in the uh, in Pretoria, Pretoria Zoo. So, so many stories can be told, and not only about the old people of Govenberg, but even about that young man, even about others. And I'm sure amongst you, there are some who are beginning to have their path and their footprints being ingrained in the footprints of those old leaders and starting to have your own footprints, um, being footprints that can be emulated by young people who are coming uh, after you. So without wasting your time, I could speak for two hours, three hours, four hours, if I were to speak about Alice. That dusty town of Alice that was there when I came here in 1973 is now surfaced. But that quiet town of Alice, still needs to be developed into a fully fledged university town. That's our ambition. Our ambition is to make sure that we, we develop this town and stop part of the rot that had begun to sink in Addis and make it a town that is admirable. I should be able to move around Addis, find a coffee shop, sit and have coffee. I should move around Addis find streets that are quiet for us to have even intellectual debates and any other debates that we want to have. Find a corner in the streets of Alice where we can sit and have dialogues. So we, that's our ambition and help us to do that. Initiatives like this should not end with the celebration of the year end, but with plans. As to what can we do? What more can we do? If I have come to Alice and I want to have a computer shop uh, where I can have coffee, a coffee and also have a computer around me to, to work on, should I not get that in a, in a town with this history that we are talking about? You know, the printing press, the lovely press that was here, was one of the best. Why we can't have it again, I don't know. In the same state as it was, I don't know. We need to fight those battles. That's heritage for this town. We were printing books for the country. Why shouldn't we, if we have the Cumen as that fountain of intellectualism? We have Cumen as that fountain of education. Why can't we have such still happening today? Lovedale. Lovedale to be relegated into an FET. And I'm not saying that we, we can reverse it immediately. But we should say to ourselves, this is the school that produced old Dada Umar Kalima, the old man who was here as a lecturer for 10. Not the low Umrung is not the young one, but the old man. Why he, why not? That old man, if you, you don't know that part of the history wrote the thesis for a doctorate on Unon House. 
When he mentioned the fact that Nongause was used by the British, they said that Mwakadima, of course, he was a student then, but uh, because of respect, I must say that, uh, that Mwakadima, if you can remove this part that talks about the British having been responsible for the cattle killings that took place in Nongause, you'll have your doctorate. This is the only part that makes you not have it. And he said, I'm happy. I'm happy that you can confirm that I qualify for the doctorate. But the truth is truth. I'm not going to remove it. And he never removed it. But that's the caliber of people that we're talking about. People who could stand for the truth, even at their own expense in terms of qualifications. Thank you very much. I would like to have, um, have love to speak more, but uh, I'll stay a few minutes.